God or no God, Islam God or no God, Islamic Viewpoint versus Atheist Viewpoint, Part 3 Creation of the Universe The descriptions of creation in the Quran are primarily messages from God, rather than factual or historical accounts. They are intended to stimulate the readers or listeners into contemplating the order and magnificence of the universe and thinking about the Creator who is behind it all. For example, verily, in the creation of the heavens and the earth and in the alternation of night and day are signs for people who exercise their intellect. Quran 3 190 In the creation of the heavens and the earth, from nothing with no precedent, and in the following of the night and day, and the difference in their length, are clear signs for those of understanding which lead them to the Creator of the universe, worthy alone of worship. Those who remember Allah in all conditions, standing, sitting and lying on their sides, and reflect on the creation of the heavens and the earth, saying that their Lord did not originate this wonderful creation without a reason, and is far above that, and ask Him to protect them from the punishment of the fire of hell. By enabling them to do good and protecting them from doing wrong they say, Our Lord, whoever you enter into the fire of hell from your creation has been humiliated and disgraced. On the Day of Judgment, the wrongdoers will have no helpers to protect them from Allah's punishment and repayment. Our Lord, we have heard a caller to faith saying, Have faith in your Lord. So we responded to him and have faith in what he calls us to and we follow the sacred law, so forgive us our sins and do not disgrace us, and do not take us to account for our bad actions. Let us die with the righteous, and enable us to do good and stay away from disobedience. Our Lord, give us guidance and the help in this world that you promised us through the words of your messengers, and do not disgrace us on the day of judgment by entering us into the fire of hell. Our Lord, you are generous and never do you break your promise. So their Lord responded to their prayer, saying that he does not allow the reward of anything you do, small or big, to be lost, whether the person who does it is male or female. You are from one another in your origins, and the faith that you follow does not reward males and females differently. Those who emigrated for the sake of Allah, driven from their homes by the disbelievers, suffered harm in order to obey their Lord. And who fought for the sake of Allah and died so that the word of Allah would be supreme, they will certainly be forgiven their sins on the day of judgment. It will be overlooked, and they will be entered into gardens with rivers flowing under their palaces, as a reward from Allah with Allah is the best reward, unlike any other. O Prophet, do not feel burdened nor distressed by the movement of the disbelievers in the land, and their power and the extent of their trade and provision. All of this is passing, and all that they will have left is their bad deeds. Surah Ali Imran 190-196 The descriptions of creation are interspersed with verses extolling God's power, reproaching humankind's ingratitude, and prompting humans to inquisitively ponder over their own creation and this entire universe. For example, do they not look at the camels, how they are created? At the sky, how it is raised? At the mountains, how they are rooted and fixed firm? Quran 2246. After Allah mentioned the disparity between the states of the wretched and the fortunate in the afterlife, He directed the sight of the disbelievers to what will show them the power of the Creator and the beauty of His creation, so that they can use this as evidence for faith in order to enter paradise and become of the fortunate, by saying, Do they not look with reflection at the camels, how Allah created them and subjugated them to human beings? And at the sky, how He raised it so that it became a protected ceiling above them, that does not fall on them? and at the mountains, how he erected them and used them to make the earth stable so that it does not shake with the people, and at the earth, how he spread it out, and made it suitable for people to settle on. After he directed them to look at those things that show his power, he directed his messenger, saying, So counsel, O messenger, these people and warn them of Allah's punishment. You are but one who reminds you are only required to remind them. Guiding them to faith is in Allah's hands alone. You have not been given control over them so that you can compel them to have faith. But, those of them who turn away from faith and reject Allah and His Messenger, Allah will punish them on the Day of Judgment with the greatest punishment by entering them into hell to remain there forever. To me alone is their return after their death. Then it is my duty alone to call them to account for their actions. This is not for you or anyone besides you. Surah al 17-26 The Quran clearly states that the universe had a beginning, and that God caused that beginning. All that God needs to create anything is to say to it, be the originator of the heavens and the earth. When he, God, decrees a matter, he only says to it, be, and it is. Quran 2 117 Allah is the creator of the heavens and the earth and all that is in them, and there is nothing in creation that is like him. 
if he decrees and wills something, he only says to it be and it is as he willed it. Nothing can stop his command and his decree. Those without knowledge from among the people of the scripture and the idolaters asked, in their stubbornness against the truth, why Allah did not speak to them directly, or why a miracle was not sent for them to see. Disbelieving communities said similar things to their prophets in the past, their hearts are all similar, because all disbelievers are the same, even if they are from different times and places. Allah makes his signs clear to those who are certain of the truth when it appears to them, not doubting or resisting it. Surah Al-Baqarah 117-118 Describing the creation of the heavens and the earth, the Quran states that the universe started as one entity, which was then unstitched or as science explains it a single, infinitely dense point, which then exploded outwards, the Big Bang. Have not the disbelievers seen that the heavens and the earth were rakin, joined together as one unit, a mass all sewn up, and then we fatak nahoma, unstitched them, clove them asunder, and made from water every living thing? Quran 21:30. Do those who disbelieved in Allah not know that the heavens and the earth were joint without any gap in between that rain should come down from it, then I split them apart? And I made every animal and plant from the water that comes down from the sky. Do they not consider this and believe in Allah alone? Surat al anbiya verse 2130 Rataka in Arabic means assembling and joining the pieces of fabric together, which is the opposite of fataka, unstitching separating between two joined or sealed parts at the point of attachment. These two words are used to describe fabric. When a textile fabric is unstitched and its threads are unraveled, it is said, Fataka al thab the stitching of the dress has come undone. Accordingly, God saying, The heavens and the earth were ratkin, means they were one whole, interwoven, connected, and inseparable, without space between them, then, we, God, Fatak Nahoma, unstitched them, clove them asunder. Furthermore, the verb Fataka refers to gentle separation at a weak point. Explosion is about chaos and destruction rather than creation. From the viewpoint of the Quran, everything, including the heavens and earth, was interwoven and inseparable. Fataka literally translates as unstitching, which typically has to be done carefully. Here, it signifies an accurate and planned process, rather than a random one, which is consistent with the intelligently designed and organized universe that followed. When a tailor undoes the stitches on a piece of fabric, he does so with the utmost care, whereas an explosion disperses the matter in all directions without order or a system. The Quran mentions that the universe, at one point in its origin was a gaseous mass, from which began the formation of the heavens and the earth. Then he, God, turned to the heaven when it was smoke, and said to it and to the earth, Come, into being, willingly or unwillingly. They said, We come willingly. 41 colon 11 Then Allah, may he be glorified, resolved to create the sky at a time when it was smoke, saying to it and the earth, Submit to my command willingly, or be forced, it has to be one of the two. They said, We come willingly, O our Lord. We have no wish except your wish. Surat Fusilat, verse 11. Smoke obviously corresponds to the nebular hypothesis put forward by modern science. It proposes that the sun, the earth, and the rest of the solar system formed from a nebula, or a cloud of gas and dust. The Quran also establishes that the universe is not static but is constantly expanding and dynamic. With power did we, God, construct the heaven, and verily, we are steadily expanding it. 51 colon 47 And the sky I made and perfected its making with strength, and am expanding its edges and expanding for my servants by increasing provision. And the earth I made prepared for those who live on it, like a spread for them. How excellent a preparer I am when I prepared it for them. And of everything I have created two types, like the male and female, sky and earth, and the land and sea. So that you remember the oneness of Allah who created two types of everything and you remember his power. Surah ADH Dariyat 47-49 This means that, since the universe expands, at some specific time in the past the entire universe must have begun this expansion from a single point. In other words, the universe had to have a zero beginning, which implies a beginner. In the 1920s, astronomer Edwin Hubble studied the movement of galaxies and observed that they were continually moving away from each other at an accelerating rate, directly proportional to the distance of the galaxy from the Earth. His observation led to the most important astronomical discovery of the 20th century, the universe is expanding. It also provided for the foundation of the Big Bang Theory, which requires the creation of the universe from nothing. Since the parts of the universe are continually moving apart from each other, they must have been a single mass at one point in the past.
By going back in time and reversing the process of cosmic expansion, all particles would converge until they shrink back to a point. The Quran is a book of guidance and signs, not science. This guidance comes in different ways. Knowledge about the universe and humankind is one of them, which will continue to unfold, over time, by God's will. We, God, will show them our signs in the universe and in their own selves, until it becomes manifest to them that this, the Quran, is the truth. Quran 41 53 I will show them my signs in the heavens and on earth. I will show them my signs within souls so that it will become clear to them without any doubt that this Quran is the truth without any doubt. Is it not enough for these idolaters that the Quran is true by Allah's testimony than it is from Him? Who can be a greater witness than Allah? If they were seeking the truth they would have sufficed with the testimony of their Lord. Surely, these idolaters doubt the meeting of their Lord on the day of judgment as they deny resurrection and they don't believe in the afterlife. Therefore, they do not prepare for it with righteous action. Indeed, Allah's knowledge and power encompasses everything. Surah Fusilat 53-54 the Quran launches the call to walk in the earth to know how the creation started, in the verse stating. Say, O Muhammad, travel throughout the land and see how he originated the creation. Quran 29 20. O Messenger, say to these deniers of the resurrection, travel through the land and think how Allah began the creation. Then Allah will restore people after their death to the second life for the resurrection and reckoning. Allah is powerful over everything, nothing is outside His ability, so He is able to resurrect people just as He created them in the first place. He punishes whom He wishes from His creation through His justice, and He has mercy on whom He wishes amongst His creation through His grace. You are not going to escape your Lord, nor can you flee from His punishment on earth or in the heavens. You do not have besides Allah any helper to take care of your affairs nor do you have any assistant to lift His punishment from you. Those who disbelieved in the verses of Allah and meeting Him on the Day of Judgment, those have lost hope in my mercy, so they will never enter paradise due to their disbelief. And those will have a painful punishment that will await them in the afterlife. Surah al ankabut 20-23 God's statement in the previously mentioned verse clearly indicates that the secrets of the beginning of creation are stored inside the earth, in the rocks, fossils, meteorites, and the deep sea. These secrets and signs that point to the beginning of creation can only be known by walking in the earth and exploring nature. God's Book of Nature Allah Islam regards this universe as a vast book, replete with signs and wonders, which, like the Quran, must be explored to gain knowledge of God and His power. Abundant references to the cosmos, nature, and human creation come in the context of testifying to the unlimited power, knowledge, and wisdom of the Creator into the divine origin of the Quran through amazing, recently discovered scientific facts, which were totally unknown 1,400 years ago. 1. No indeed. If he does not stop, we will seize him by the forehead, his lying, sinful forehead. Quran 96 15-16 It is not as this ignorant person imagines. If he does not stop causing harm to my servant and rejecting him, I will definitely seize him and drag him violently by the top of his head, towards the hellfire. The owner of that forehead is a liar in speech and erroneous in action. So when he is seized by his forehead towards the hellfire, let him call out to his companions and associates asking for their help to save him from the punishment. I will call upon the gatekeepers of hell, the fierce angels who do not disobey my command when I command them, and do whatever they are commanded to do. It will then be seen which of the two parties are stronger and more capable. It is not as this oppressor thinks, that he can cause any harm to you. So do not follow him in command or prohibition, rather, prostrate to Allah and draw closer to him through acts of obedience, because that is how you can draw closer to him. Surah Al-Alaq 15-19 The Quran does not call this person a liar, but calls his forehead lying and sinful, and warns him to stop. Recent studies have found that the prefrontal cortex, located in the very front of the brain just behind the forehead, is associated with the ability to generate deception. 2. More than 1,400 years ago verses 6-7 of chapter al nabat describes mountains as pegs, have we not made the earth as a bed, and the mountains as pegs? Did I not make the earth spread out evenly for them so that it is fit for them to live on? And did I not put mountains on it like pegs to stop it from shaking? And O oh people! I created you of different types, some of you are males while others are females. And I made your sleep the end point of your activeness, so that you may rest. And I made the night a cover for you with its darkness, like a garment that you cover your private parts with. And I made the day a field for earning and finding provision. And I made above you seven, solid skies, perfect in their creation. 
and I made the sun an extremely bright and hot lamp. And I sent some clouds for which the time has come to pour down with abundant rain, so that through it I can extract different types of grains and crops, and extract gardens that entwine with one another due to the closeness of the branches of their trees. After Allah mentioned these blessings that prove his power, he followed it up with mention of the resurrection and the day of judgment. Because the one who is capable of creating these blessings is also capable of resurrecting the dead and taking them to account. He says, Indeed, the day of separation between the creation was appointed and fixed on a time that will not change. On that day, the angel will blow into the horn the second time, upon which, O people, you shall come in groups. And the sky will open up, it will have gaps like open doors. And the mountains will be made to move until they become like dispersed dust particles, becoming like a mirage. Indeed, hell is watchful, lying is wait. For the oppressors, as a point of return they will be made to return to. Wherein they shall stay for endless ages and years. They will not experience cold breezes in it that will cool them from the heat of the blaze, nor will they taste any drink that they will enjoy. They will only taste extremely hot water, and the flowing pus of the people of hell. As a requital in accordance to the disbelief and deviance they were on. Indeed, in the world, they did not fear the Allah taking them to account in the afterlife, because they did not bring faith in the resurrection. So if they had feared the resurrection, they would have brought faith in Allah and performed good deeds. And they vehemently rejected my verses I revealed to my messenger. I recorded and counted each of their deeds, they are all written in their books of deeds. O transgressors! So endure this everlasting punishment, I will not increase you except in punishment upon your punishment. Indeed, for those who are mindful of their Lord by fulfilling His commands and refraining from the things He has not allowed, there is a point of success they will succeed on. By achieving the paradise they sought. It is full of gardens and grapevines and women of similar ages, and full glasses of wine. In paradise, they will not hear any false speech, nor lies. Neither will they lie to one another. All that will be from what Allah will give to them in graciousness and benevolence, and it will be sufficient for them. He is the Lord of the heavens, the earth and whatever is between them, the benevolent of the world and the afterlife. No one on earth or in the heavens is able to question him except when he gives them permission. On the day then Gabriel and the angels will stand in rows, not speaking to intercede on behalf of anyone except whom the benevolent grants them permission to intercede for. And has made a straight statement i.e. the statement of oneness of Allah. That which has been described to you is the day in which there is no doubt regarding its occurrence. So whoever wishes salvation on it from the punishment of Allah, he should take the path to it through performing good deeds that will please his Lord. O people! Indeed! I have warned you of an impending punishment which will occur on the day when a person will see what deeds he sent forth in the world, and the disbeliever will say, Wishing safety from the punishment, if only I had become dust like the animals, when it is said to them on the day of judgment, become dust. Surah Naba 6 40. Verse 15 of chapter Al Mal defines their main role as stabilizers of the earth, and he has set firm mountains in the earth so that it would not shake with you. He spread out mountains on earth to keep it firm so that it does not shake and cause you to become unsettled. He caused rivers to flow so that you can drink from them and give water to your livestock and crops. He split in it pathways for you to tread and reach your destinations without losing your. He made for you on earth clear landmarks that you could be guided by when traveling during the day. He also made for you stars in the sky that you could use as a guide at night. Surah Nal 15-16 3. Verse 14 of Chapter al muminin describes the stages of embryonic development 1,400 years before modern science. Then we, God, made the nutfa, male sperm and female ovum, into an alaka, a leech-like clinging clot, then we made the alaka into a mudja, a chewed-like lump of flesh. Then we made bones from that mudja, then we clothed the bones with flesh. Verily, I created the father of mankind, Adam, from clay. I took the soil he was created from, from a mixture of water and the soil of the earth. Then I created his progeny who procreate, by way of a drop of sperm that lodges in the womb until birth. Then created the lodged drop of sperm into a red clot of blood, which I then created into a piece of flesh, which I then created into hard bones. I then covered those bones with flesh and then developed it into a completely different creation, by blowing a soul into it and bringing it out into life. Praised is Allah, the best of creators. Al-Muminin 12-14 Reflections
the cause of the universe must have been non-material, because if the cause was material natural, it would be subject to the same laws of decay as the universe. So the cause of the universe's beginning must have been supernatural, i.e., non-material or spirit, a cause outside of space-matter-time. Such a cause would not be subject to the laws of decay and so would not have a beginning. That is, the cause had to be eternal spirit, creation scientist Dr. Don Batten. Uncaused or self-caused universe For atheists, the universe and all that it contains is the product of mere chance, shaped by mindless, undirected processes of nature without plan, purpose, or meaning. And, ultimately, it does not point to the hand of a creator. The laws of physics, not the will of God, provide atheists with the real explanation as to how life on Earth came into being. The Big Bang was the inevitable consequence of these laws, unaided by any external agency, such reliance on physical laws unavoidably ascribed to them creative power, when actually, physical laws do not cause anything to happen. They are descriptive, not creative. Like all laws, they must have a lawmaker. A scientific law, according to its definition, is unbreakable, i.e., without exceptions, or else it would not be a law. Yet, from the atheist view, right at its birth the universe broke a basic physical law, something cannot come out of nothing, and life popped into existence, spontaneously, from nothing. Then the universe broke the well-established law of biogenesis. Life comes only from life and reproduces after its own kind, which totally rules out spontaneous generation of life from non-living matter. Yet, since atheists operate on the assumption that there is no God, they believe, as evolution teaches, that non-living chemicals spontaneously evolved, over billions of years, into living cells. 1. Evolutionists maintain that life began when lightning and heat discharged into a primordial soup of chemicals, randomly transforming simple organic molecules into larger, more complex biological molecules and eventually into primitive cells. Cells then form themselves into organisms, and organisms into complex, conscious, perceptive, and understanding beings who can move, feel, think, hear, see, and communicate. Over billions of years, they branched out into all current life forms, including human beings. 2. Before even the simplest of living cells can form, the organic compounds that make up a cell and carry out life processes must exist. Living organisms are primarily composed of 21 elements of varying percentages. Spontaneous chemical evolution of the one-celled organism means that 21 naturally occurring, scattered elements would have had to gather and interact at the appropriate time and place in a specific precise sequence to form precise amounts of carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids, DNA and RNA, the four basic categories of molecules that make up the building blocks of life. 3. All information necessary to build and maintain a single cell, or a multicellular organism, is contained in its DNA molecules. Within its double helix structure, DNA carries an enormous set of genetic instructions for the formation and function of all living organisms. The very simplest life form has about 500,000, 500,000 base pairs, letters, of coded information within its DNA, while a human genome has about 3 billion, 3 million, 000 base pairs of DNA inside each body cell. If they were printed as letters in a book, they would fill more than 500,000, 500,000 pages. That is about 1,000, 1,000 thick books. DNA molecules can store information many millions of times more densely than existing technology for digital storage. One single gram of DNA could be enough to hold a trillion gigabytes of data for 2,000 years. 4. To explain how life began, the origin of the information necessary to build the first cell must first be known. Science asserts that information is a non-material entity and cannot be created by matter. Information can only originate from an intelligent source through a process of conscious creative thought and not by chance, chaos, and mindless accidents. There is no room for gradual development in the structure of DNA. The DNA is highly complicated, organized, and accurate and must have been complete, perfect, and fully functioning from the very first instant of its existence, without involving a step-by-step -step formation or slow evolution over time. 5. Back in the time of Darwin, genes were not yet discovered. And so far, no theory has explained the origin of the first life. It takes DNA to make proteins, and it takes protein to make DNA. Obviously, neither could have arisen spontaneously by chance chemistry. So how did the whole thing get started? Approximately 8.7 million different species exist on Earth, and over 5 billion species have gone extinct since the dawn of life. Done with Allah's help and grace, 